Welcome to a new episode of Books Review Podcast by Dreamers Jotter. Today, I review the book Capital, in the 21st Century, written by Thomas P. Getty. When I was about to start writing this article, I heard the news about all the G7 leaders endorsing a minimum corporate tax of 15% across nations. Several European nations raced to the bottom by consistently reducing the corporation tax in order to compete with each other. The G7 leader's proposal shows that countries are ready to cooperate for a better economy. This is a significant point that the author of this magnum opus, Thomas Piketty, suggests for bettering the economy, not just for a few rich but for everyone. Before deciding to read this book, I read reviews on Goodreads, I noticed a lot of negative ratings and reviews particularly from pro-capitalists who trash Piketty, naming him a communist and contending that the book is a part of communist propaganda. The sad part is, for some people, communism seems so evil as if it were equivalent to fascist ideologies like Nazism. Anyway, this book is not against the whole idea of capitalism, he merely identifies a major problem of capitalism, economic inequality and its social consequences, and provides potential solutions to this problem. Many economists believe that inequality is necessary for economic growth. But the question is, how much inequality is necessary and tolerable? According to Piketty, we are reaching or already reached abysmal levels of inequality in many countries. The book is of textbook quality filled with great descriptions and analysis of more than two centuries of the economic history of the world. Piketty concentrates on the economic inequality among people belonging to various classes of income. The historical economic analysis is carried out primarily on two factors, per capita wealth and income, categorized into three classes, top 10%, next 40%, and the bottom 50%. The analysis focuses on developed countries of the world, England, France, Germany, the US, and Japan. His primary sources include tax records, registration documents etc. published by the governments. For instance, France used to collect details about its people's wealth such as the worth of an individual's estate since the French Revolution, 1790s. The major limitation for extending this kind of investigation to other countries like India is the lack of reliable data for longer periods. Piketty starts the book by explaining economic buzzwords such as GDP, national income, economic growth and then goes on to explore how economic inequality can be quantified. Many key concepts like capital-to-income ratio of the national income, economic growth, rate of return on capital that influence the inequality are elaborated. The primary conclusion of the book is that as long as the rate of return on capital, R, is greater than the growth of the economy, G, the inequality will exist, and its magnitude is proportional to the difference between R and G. The inequality, R greater than G, implies that the wealth accumulated in the past grows more rapidly than output and wages. Quote, the entrepreneur inevitably tends to become more dominant over those who own nothing but their labor. Unquote. Although levels of G as high as 8% are not uncommon in India, such levels are nowhere possible in the developed countries. G value also depends on the population growth. For example, if the working population of a country increases by 1%, then the overall output produced by the nation is also increased by 1%. We can observe that the population growth rate has not been very high even in countries like India and China. So Piketty argues that G value will be reduced over time, but our value may still be higher than G, and we have to take necessary steps to reduce the inequality. He disputes the arguments of some economists that inequality occurs only at the initial stages, but will lessen as the economy progresses. He contends that capitalist markets do not have any inherent checks or a feedback mechanism to prevent the worsening of existing inequality and the government should take necessary steps. He refutes assertions of several economists that the decline of inequality around the 1940s and 50s is a natural phenomenon, but they are just the result of steps taken by governments post the Second World War to get the economy back on track and reduce the debt incurred during the war. The main solution that Piketty offers is progressive income tax, and tax on capital. Progressive tax means that the rate of tax has to be high if your income is high and less if your income is low. He suggests that the direct tax paid by an individual should include both income from labor and income from capital. In India, for example for the financial year 2020-21, the highest income tax rate excluding the surcharge, is 30%, while long-term capital gains tax is 10%. This indicates if you earn 100 rupees by labor, you pay 30 rupees of tax, while if you earn the same amount as a profit by selling off the shares of a company you bought a year ago, you have to pay only 10 rupees as tax. 
people that belong to higher economic class receive a major portion of their income as profit from capital investment rather than from labor and thereby end up paying a lower rate of tax. Also, taxation based on the assets held by an individual or a company has become very difficult as huge companies can register themselves in tax havens and circumvent the tax laws in the countries where they actually operate from. If governments have to improve their tax collection, he argues that all the countries should cooperate by sharing data of bank accounts and assets held by foreign nationals. Although he agrees that a global tax on capital is a utopian idea, he suggests that countries should strive towards achieving such cooperation and transparency at least at the regional level, for example, in Europe. Another interesting argument raised by the author is that modern economics has been increasingly dependent on mathematical models. He denounces purely empirical methods such as controlled experiments probably referring to RCT popularized by Abhijit Benarji, being used heavily in economics. He says that the ultimate goal of economics should be to bring us closer to an ideal society and to achieve it, economists must participate in public debate and work with other social scientists. Economics does not stand on theoretical principles alone, but also on the political and social factors of the time. For more reviews, log on to dreamersjotter.com or check the description. Thank you for listening. Bye.